championing and empowering women's emotional and financial independence. This is Powerful Women Today. And now here's your host, Carolina M. Billings. Welcome to Powerful Women Today. We have an amazing guest today, Kim Chernicky. She is an absolute expert at guiding executives from corporate to entrepreneurship in such manner that everyone hits the ground running. <laughs> so welcome. welcome to Powerful Women Today. Um, my goodness, you are the right person at the right time in what's happening in our employment and workforce. Wow, thank you. What is happening out there right now? Wow, well, you know, uh, you've all heard the term the gig economy, right? That is yeah. what we're living in right now. Um, you know, <laughs> research shows that, you know, by 2020, 50, 5-0, 50% of the world's workforce is going to be freelance. So, you know, transitioning from corporate to entre entrepreneurship is uh, a, a plan whose time has come. It's a reality, it's, I know. Is yeah. you see it every day, and you know when we first thought of the gig economy, we thought you know it was all the part-time students, it was Uber, it was. <laughs> right. But now we're we're looking at organizations uh, realizing that you know what outsourcing and outsourcing locally, which is which is wonderful, yeah. is beginning to be the trend. And, uh, but, but primarily, and you know, the young, our young uh, people, millennials and, and such, this is really the, the world they're, they're inheriting. This is what it is. It's becoming second nature to them. And, uh, but, but for, for our executives, that is the, the group that, you know, I, I would really like us to focus on because sure. it, it comes with a lot of experience. It comes, we've paid our dues, darn it. And what do you mean we have to pay them all over again? In the reality, you know, when, you know what I laugh? When I see all those images on like LinkedIn and social media of somebody saying, oh, you can own your own business. And there's a picture of someone in a hammock with their feet up. <laughs> <laughs> and I have laugh. They started their own business, I wonder. <laughs> and I laugh. So tell us, what, what do you see? What is, what is your best? guide uh, to us to, to a reality check and how to best prepare yourself if you are thinking of exiting corporate to start your own business. Sure. What what I'm really seeing out there, um, is, and I've been I've been working, uh, you know, with executives who are transitioning um, from corporate into their businesses for about seven years uh, now, and I'm really seeing that. Uh, and I do that in my private practice, but also for one of Canada's largest human capital firms. And it's, it's around 15% of, wow. of people who are um, transitioning now, whether they're being downsized or are leaving to go to their third, third act or whatever, about 15% are going the, uh, the consulting route or the um, entrepreneurial route. Some because it's just time, you know, they want to have that work-life balance, they want to live life on their own terms. Some because of ageism, per, you know, perceived ageism that, uh, uh, you know, uh, they can hire someone much younger for less, you know, compensation and perks and so forth. And some because they just, it's, it's just time, they want to live life on their own terms. So um, uh, I, I see a lot of that and I do have, that's who I, I typically work with. So, um, and that coupled with the gig economy, that is where the world is heading. Mm -hmm. um, but the big thing to be successful in that is, well, there's, there's a few things. First of all, you really need to be relevant. So even if you are in corporate right now, it's really important that people know what's going on out there, become thought leaders, really make sure they're relevant mm -hmm. so that when that their time comes or they choose to go the entrepreneurial route, they're ready. And yeah. also it's about really being well networked. I mean, you know, and that is, I'm glad you touched on that point because I've exited corporate two years ago. Mm -hmm. wow. And I have to tell you with, with my background as a, as a CFO CHRO, right? I was not doing a lot of networking. Like really? not as much as I you? could have been. <laughs> 
like I'm really guilty. <laughs> Not as much as I could have or should have, like stuck to my associations, you know, and, um, and really, um, I don't want to say, I don't want to think that I took it for granted. I think it was that transition. LinkedIn has had just come full force and uh, like many, um, many executives, we thought that, you know, LinkedIn was for recruiting and uh, there wasn't really that uh, urgency or emphasis, even if you're not networking, because let's face it, when you're an executive, you're working 60 hours plus a week, right? 100%, so yeah. You could be out networking every night if you wanted to. There's so many events. And, and a lot of times, you know, if you have a family and other demands, networking becomes difficult. Yeah. So establishing your brand, you know, at the time, like even just as, as recent as a few years ago, was not something executives were really working at. Well, what you just said, developing your brand as an executive is really, really important. So that when the time comes up that you are downsized or you decide to make the move, you, your, your brand precedes you. If I can share a story, I just yeah, got off the yeah, I just had a, a meeting with uh, an executive who um, has left the, um, well, it's the toy market. And, uh, um, and, and he left his last position. And he now, because he was so well networked and strategic, he has five clients that he's working with now in quite a narrow market. Five. And he's still, hitting the ground running. <laughs> he did hit the ground running. Perfect title for this. And I, I thought, wow, this is really timely. I'm having this talk with him. Mm -hmm. Five clients that he already yeah. has. So now, what did he attribute? What let's let's dissect that. Um, what would you say um, attributed to his success? Well, first of all, um, he was just very, very, um, very strategic in the associations that he was involved with, keeping in touch with former colleagues. You know, it's funny because we were talking about, oh, yeah, I've known Howie for 20 years. He's just kept up those, those key, um, I guess, colleagues and, and staying in touch with them and just having fun, you know, going for coffees. Maybe, you know, it was, for him, it was through coffees, through golf. Um, you know, through, through different associations. So it's just being really strategic around it so that when the time comes, you know that you can tap into those, um, those, um, those people, both for client op or contract opportunities, but also to be referred on to other opportunities. So it's, it's about who you know, but also who you know who knows <laughs> you need right. to know. It's not just it's not just your first audience. There's your secondary. There's your tertiary, and uh, and and now with technology now, I mean, LinkedIn is such. And, and it's, it, I live in LinkedIn, and and uh, no, we're not we're not being paid. You know what? LinkedIn is huge. It really is really important. Huge. It is a way. Think of being. Think think of an artist, right? LinkedIn is your artist portfolio. Yeah. It is where you can showcase your expertise and to be yeah. able to really show like through whether it's articles or commenting or doing thought again thought uh contribution thought and leadership, thought leadership yep. to mm -hmm. to the general narrative is a great and easy way to to begin to do your branding uh in case and adding you are value. planning <laughs> right Look, sometimes you're not value. planning like you work for an organization um, that is that is that is fantastic and it's rare in 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 you work with a lot of organizations that help their executives transition yes. which is incredible i mean organizations yep. are should be contacting experts like you in mm -hmm. order to help their whenever they're downsizing or whenever they are you know redirecting or reorganizing their organization so that there's a smooth transition for the executives Absolutely. into their next, you know, their next venture. That, yep. that is actually a very smart business. It is, and on top of that, I think it's important for executives just to be aware of the landscape, of the gig economy mm -hmm. um, landscape, and to stay relevant so that, first of all, they have the best possible chance of not being downsized and if they are downsized or moving on, that they, um, they really know what's going on and they'll be able to get contracts with a number of organizations and develop a portfolio type of business as opposed to just being 
full time and they can drive their own futures and drive their own time and balance and work life well, balance. When you say stay relevant, what mm -hmm. exactly do you mean? It means being leading edge, being ahead of the curve. So whatever, whatever um, industry you're in, whatever position you're in, whether as a HR executive like you were or or whether it's in consumer packaged goods or you know whatever we're talking industry vertical as well as the position that you're in it's knowing what the trends are knowing what the disrupt the disruptors are mm -hmm. um, knowing um, what's going on what's topical uh, what the zeitgeist is what you know yeah. what are the big um, feisty topics and how you can be someone who can't and it's also about best practices knowing what best practices are in your area of expertise. And, and innovation, yeah. sometimes even just uh, proposing a new way of doing things, even if it is just theorizing. Again, yeah. right, it's about building a narrative uh, that showcases your expertise. Yeah. And even if you are employed for an existing company, don't think that doing you know that that you cannot develop a brand by being a good corporate citizen of the organization that you are with right absolutely is that that is the easiest and surest way to a not upset the apple cart and to, yeah. begin to, <laughs> to begin to you know plant little seeds in case you need them that way you're not starting from scratch no, you, you nailed it. It's being relevant within the organization that you're in, within the industry you're in, but also knowing the broader perspective so that you are adding value and you're not, I hate to say this word, but it's, it's what I believe, you're not just a cog in the wheel. Yeah. You're helping with the wheel until you can create your own wheel. <laughs> you know, and tell you that you decide to go out and develop your own business where you create the vision and, and be able to execute on it. Wow, for sure. And one of the things that, that uh, you and I have collaborated in, we're part of, you're one mm -hmm. of our beloved experts at Powerful Women Today. Yeah. That, um, you know, once you exit, like, in, in, in I guess to, to some degree, I am the, the, the perfect uh, example for that is that when I exited corporate, my first instinct was to go back to doing business with corporate because that's the world I knew, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing how to develop, doing a B2B, in my opinion, um, as, a, you know, as a service provider and a, and a knowledge leader, um, business to business seems to be the most lucrative um, 100%. way to, be, to do consulting. I, I agree. And that's, that's my world too. It's, it's B2B, right? Like, for, so you come out of corporate and then you be able to sell your services and add value back to corporate. I mean, that's, I, I believe that's um, the most lucrative way and, and the most consistent and sustainable income is, is going that route. So that's course, why. Sure. And you yeah, develop, nice. um, you know, this is, this is a, an unscripted little plug <laughs> Yeah. It's because you developed, like you specialize in teaching people how to prepare those corporate, because it's different to be at the mm. opposite end of the equation. When yes. you were in corporate and you may have been in procurement or you were responsible for evaluating what external resources you brought or you allowed into the organization, when you are the one providing it, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a slight different it you know, is. perspective and it's a, a slight different um, way to present your knowledge. It and is, and especially, um, and on that, it's, it's interesting because one of the things, one of the biggest barriers, the, the executives that I work with when they want to go out and consult and start up their own businesses, even the most senior ones, even the most senior ones are like, but it's me, you know, like, how do I, I, I feel um, like it's selling me and they, and, and it's like, they always had the big organization behind them. Now it's just a little old me. That's right. So, right. So that can be a real struggle. That can especially be for women. I think women struggle, um, you know, our audience, we're powerful women today, our audience yep. struggles with that because if we're selling a product, it's really, you know, not easy, but there's the a clear path, yep. right? When you have a product to know what your cost plus is, to yeah. reverse engineer what your profitability and your margin and there's guidelines from, you know, industry to how to be competitive. But right. when you're selling services and you're selling yourself and you're selling your own brand, my whole goodness. different ball game right is so women seem to struggle with that mm -hmm. in, in putting the right value 
Yep. Do there certain they, I, I find, I don't know about it. Please tell me about it because from, from the women that I meet, you see, they're, they're overshooting. They're, they're saying, you know, I charge $450 an hour. And, and, and I look at their resume in my HR background. I look at their <laughs> scaffolding and, and I'm going based on what, right? Or right. You meet other women that are like, oh, you know, just pay me what you can afford, <laughs> right. which is not a good strategy. So what is happening with women? How, how can they determine their value? The whole thing once you really get clear on the well, first that you drove in corporate i mean especially especially women executives there because they added a lot of value they nurtured teams they um, added value to the bottom line depending on on what they did but it's really standing in that knowing that you make a difference and add value and then being able to stand in it in your own services i mean i think once you start working with clients, see results, then you can kind of own that value and then you can charge what, you know, what you're worth, but it's a process. It is a it process. Is, and you, do, you do need to do your homework. You need to see what, you know, what are other people with similar skills and offerings charging, right? Because you still have to be competitive and you find, you, you need to find your niche in, in the market. Well, you, you really hit it. It's a bit of an art and a science finding your fee. It's like, what will the market bear? What are other people charging? But then where is your value relative to that? And what's your big juicy promise? What, what is it that you're going to deliver? That, um, uh, and then you can position your fee relative to that. Mm -hmm. In your area of mastery, right? Like I, it's is mm -hmm. so important to develop. I am a big believer in developing your own programs just like, yeah. like you did successfully and you teach yeah. people that because that yeah. way you're developing intellectual property, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're differentiating yourself. And, you know, we were, yeah. uh, I was working with, um, in, in Canada with the EDC, with Export Development Canada. Yeah. And they were, um, we were just brainstorming as to how to best help women, you know, expand their, their services when X is the service, right? Like pick, yes. pick whatever discipline you like. And she was telling me, um, my contact that, uh, for the first time in Canada, services are surpassing goods as the export, as our export. That's amazing. To the world. That is amazing. That is, that's huge. That's I know, I know. And for knowledge workers is, is knowing how to package it, right? And, yes. and know that you can, some, some needs within the industry are transferable. Yep. And, uh, you know, what happens in Canada, you can easily market and sell in the U.S., for example, just to economies that are, that are fairly similar. Yep, absolutely. And just to build on what you said about mastery, it's my firm belief that whatever, if you want to really have a successful and sustainable business out on your own, it's got to be something you're um, kind of that trifecta, what you're most passionate about, what your greatest strengths are, and the greatest value you provide. And if you can put that into a service and develop that into your intellectual property, to your point, mm -hmm. you, you've got a, a winning formula for sure. Wow. For yeah. sure. And to know that, you know, you are, especially when you're exiting, likely you, you know, if it is an amicable exit of one way or another, whether you're, sorry, whether you're preparing for it, so hopefully yeah. you are building up your reserves for it, or yeah. it's an amicable, you know, restructuring where you're given um, a little bit or, or a lot of compensation, depending on the organization, is yeah. to, to know that there, there will be expenses. And what do you yeah. find, how prepare are, are executives that, um, that, that leave or that find themselves trying to start their own business, how prepare are they? I see, the, themselves? I see the full gamut. I really do. I see people who, are, who basically go into fetal position mm -hmm. because they just weren't prepared and thought they would be with a specific organization for the rest of their life. And then they're let go six to 10 years early and just don't, I mean, 
literally go into the fetal position. I've seen that. Um, then there's people who are like, you know what? I was just waiting for this opportunity so I could go out on my own. The universe is provided. This is yeah. thrilling. To others who are like, the proverbial nudge. <laughs> yeah, the proverbial nudge, and they and they embrace it, but maybe not as prepared as they'd like to be. Then there's some who come, who, you know, who have approached me proactively and said, Kim, I want to go out on my own. I want to have a plan. Can you help me to develop that plan so that I can, you know, I will, and, and exactly what I need to do so that I can then transition full gamut. Um, wow. I think what's really helpful is that people know that they want to go out on their own is to really start developing a plan now, um, really getting, becoming relevant, developing their thought leadership, um, really getting strategic with their networking so that they can hit the ground running when they make the decision to leave. There's, there is quite a few people who will do that, have done that as well. And they do, they hit the ground running, which is amazing. I'd say the bulk are kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually. Now, um, with, with uh, speaking about, you know, leaving corporate to start your own business, not everyone's mm -hmm. cut out to start a business from scratch. Correct. Yeah. You know, is is uh, I I happen to have done it. You've done it. Um, yeah. But it's it's not everyone's cup of tea um, because you need a lot of creativity. You need a lot of is is it's almost like a complete different brain function, right? Like is, some yeah. people are amazing at running a business once it's up and running, but mm -hmm. starting from scratch, from you know something as 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 innocent as the font on your business card, right? Like sometimes sure. it can be just like, oh my goodness, like, you know, a, a decision on, 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 on what is right. But yeah. do you, um, just, just my curiosity, right? Like, cause there's other ways to own a business. You could buy a business that already exists mm -hmm. or there's franchises or, or licenses. What kind of assessment uh, should people seek during if you if you do decide to say buy a franchise or if you decide mm -hmm. to to go the licensing route or buy an existing business mm -hmm. uh, what would be the 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 archway that you would recommend well i do have several um uh, contacts who can help with uh, exactly that that isn't my sweet spot but i have a, a contact who they will help um, executives and serial entrepreneurs to buy businesses and what they'll do is they'll actually um, do an assessment see what would be the perfect fit and they actually go out and go after and pitch existing business owners to see if they want to sell so that's a really great way to do it it's a long process could take mm -hmm. like a year but then that way it's not like someone just you know um leaving a, or wanting to sell a business because it's not succeeding for whatever reason so i do have um, a, a really great Canadian based company that, mm -hmm. that does that. I've also got another contact who, um, if you want to buy a franchise, um, they will actually do an assessment because there are so, there is as I many know. franchises <laughs> as, it's not just the Tim Hortons that are talking like <laughs> E2B franchises, there's all kinds of them. And they'll do an assessment um, and have a whole, like, kind of like, here's a business in a box. Mm -hmm. And you know, here's the expected returns. Here are the financials. So there are a couple of great organizations that I, I'm familiar with that um, can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, consulting is what, what I tend to help people with. Consulting yeah. and other service-based businesses, um, you know, it's low entry uh, barrier okay. to entry, low and expense. It's done right. It's low. It's low uh, fixed uh, overhead. Right. Um, you know, there's tons of people who run multi-million dollar businesses consulting yeah. businesses from their home right exactly it's, it's exactly complete, yeah is 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 the smart way to do now when something um that you were saying just just uh, hit a a note uh with me is that you said it could take up to a year to find the right you know franchise or business that you want to own if you don't want to start something from scratch and that sounds extreme right it's like oh my god a year like a year without income a year without you know, like yep. having something to, um, you know, to, to bridge the gap. But the sure. reality is that even if they were to start um, a business, a consulting business, right, from scratch, it would take a few months in order to get Typically. that done. 
Yeah, I mean, there are some who hit the ground running and have a contract as soon as they leave or as they leave or something like that. That's the ideal situation that you have some kind of income that at least pays the bills. Yes. Um, some kind of consistent revenue generation is, is really helpful. And you're right, Carolina. I mean, it is going to take, on average, you want to give it that 12-month um, window to be able to really um, to get things going. Um, and then ultimately, within a year or a couple of years, it's very possible, especially with consulting, to be able to match and exceed your, your corporate income, if that's what you want. Yeah, and, and also people should be coming to you. So if it takes a year, right, to, to do that, or six months to do that, and you are planning to, um, to leave, you know, to leave your, your current employment, it's, it's just wise to start coming to you six months or a year before you are planning to exit. You know, Ideally. Yeah, in order to, uh, to put all your ducks in a row. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have a number of clients who, who have done that. They're in certain positions and then they want to transition to corporate clients, for example. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they'll, they'll do that and, and give themselves six months to a year to be able to get those new corporate clients or... Um, as I shared earlier, clients who are in corporate and really want to consult, but you know, want to have the plan and ready to go so that, and, and have some conversations so that when they leave, they can start, they, they can hit the ground running with some clients. Fantastic. So consulting for women, right? Because we are powerful women today. Mm -hmm. um, the bulk of um, former executives that do decide to go on your own, um, you know, talk about pay, pay equity and pay equality, right? right? This is the golden opportunity for executives to, or any woman for that matter, to reach point of parity for yeah. compensation. Absolutely. And, uh, and getting the right training for it. Like this is something that, um, especially being in the management consulting business, that I'm always a little bit um, surprised when um, I meet women business owners that have not invested in training, whether it's mm -hmm. how to position their, their programs, how to build their programs, or how to sell. How yeah. to sell. Because it's, it's, you, at the end of the day, you have to sell you and your programs. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, is, is that when, you, when somebody comes to you, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, we've worked in... in, in you have helped me a lot with, with my organization in how to, um, how to position it, how to present it. Um, that is something that is part of the consultancy. That Absolutely. And in fact, it's interesting you say that because um, one of the things that consulting firms, like the big, big consulting firms, will say to executives, you know, just because you've been an executive doesn't mean you can consult because oh. you're used yeah, because you've got to learn how to have those consultative conversations, how to really be able, I mean, selling's all about learning about someone's needs, learning about um, what, what's most important to them, where the problems are, so you can provide a solution. And not everyone does that in corporate, not everyone, unless you've been in some kind of sales role. So, um, you know, it's very important to learn how to sell, but learning how to sell is learning how to have great consultative conversations, you know, be able to um, ask great questions and, and then be able to provide customized solutions based on those conversations. Not everyone is trained to do that. And it's really, it's really important to do that. Yeah, that, that would be your number one. That would be your rent. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, if you were to open a restaurant or, or a retail outlet, you would know that there are seed there's a seed investment that is needed in order to yeah. launch that business, right? Yeah. And um, in getting proper training and getting proper transitioning is so, so important. Um, you're start your own in business, order to succeed as a consultant. You, you really do. And, and I was gonna build on that, um, Carolina, um, for you to be a business owner, and I know you and I have talked about this before, you have to own your role as a rainmaker. Like you are the rainmaker of, the, of your business. So, you know, 50% of your activities need to be around, you know, 
Revenue leveraging generation. your network, yeah. you know, making those connections, you know, and it's not just about selling yourself. It's just having great conversations, connecting people. Like it's so much fun. And being surrounded. <laughs> I know, I know. For you and I, it's like we're, we're in our sauce, but yeah. even within our organization, right? And, and Powerful Women Today is one of many, you know, we, yeah. we have our own brand and our own sauce and the way we do things. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there are many, many organizations. So belonging, working with, with an advisor and a mentor and, and a consultant like him or belonging to an organization like Powerful Women Today or many other, even an industry association, right? Sure. Surround yourself with people that, that are in the same circumstances that you are. Yeah. You know, because there's some thoughts in the, as an entrepreneur, you know, I, I've, I've experienced vulnerability and I've experienced doubt and confusion and frustration that I can, I have to tell you, I had never experienced in my, in my corporate career. Like there, yeah. there were some, there was, there was confusion, <laughs> but it was never personal. Like it was, yeah. I never doubted myself in the role. Yeah. Right. Where, you know, sometimes it was the circumstances or, or the culture, or the chemistry, or the formula, or the market. There were many challenges. But when you're an entrepreneur, is you are you are it. You're the machine. You're the product, especially in consultancy. So yeah. to to work and to have the resource of a mentor or a coach, and it, it is it's, it's necessary. Vital. It's vital. It because is. When you're thinking it is you, I'm not going to make it. To be able to have those conversations with people who are successful at it, yeah, right? People who yeah. have succeeded and have, have found a, a, a way into a market, into building a practice. Already blazed but, the trail. That's right, you know, to be able, because even with us, like we all help each other in, in Powerful Women today, um, but, um, but we all, I find when I'm feeling low and down and, and then I listen to somebody articulating exactly how I'm feeling. It's like, okay, it's not just me. Exactly. <laughs> wonderful. And how did you solve it? It's so important. And how did you solve it, right? So, so if you were to give one advice to a budding um, entrepreneur about to exit uh, corporate, what, mm -hmm. what would be your, your one, two, three? My one, two, th three. Um, be well prepared with a plan. Okay. Um, really start strategically developing your network and be relevant. Be relevant, leading edge, ahead of the curve, no best practices in what you do. Three things, mm -hmm. you're going to uh, be able to hit the ground running. Amazing, wonderful. Well, we are so grateful that you joined us today and we're going to put the contact because I know you have clients all over North America, actually all over the world, but North America would be your, your uh, immediate mm -hmm. region. And we yeah. will put your contact information. And as a proud member of Powerful Women Today, you can always go on our website and find Kim's um, information as an expert. And uh, there's more. This is just the beginning, especially when it comes to women. We need to, we need to dig a little bit deeper when it comes to women succeeding in the consultancy uh, world. So I'm sure we'll have you back. And thank you, uh, thank you, Carolina, I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, please stay tuned for our next episode. We are going to be speaking to an incredible uh, thought leader in the area of uh, disrupting human resources. So we're, we're having a conversation about things. One from once what happens when you exit corporate and then what happens within corporate that will get you ready um, to succeed or to exit and find the best way to uh, get women to move forward so thank you so much everybody and have a wonderful day bye for now thank you carolina thanks for being with us on powerful women today with carolina m billings for more information, visit PowerfulWomenToday.com.